Now we've discussed all the different types of mechanical energy as well as work changes in mechanical energy, it's time to talk about how quickly these changes will take place through the concept of power. So power, which we abbreviate with a capital P, is the rate at which energy is changed or transformed from one form to another. In other words, it is the rate at which work is done, at which work is performed. The equation is pretty straightforward. The power is equal to change in energy over change in time, or it's equal to work over change in time, where those change in energies and work are, of course, in joules, and that change in time must be expressed in seconds. And when we have those units, our power is going to be expressed in units of joules per second, which is known as the watt. Now, you're actually familiar with the term watts probably from the use of, like, light bulbs. You have 40-watt light bulbs, 60-watt light bulbs, 100-watt light bulbs. And what that wattage is telling you is how quickly electrical energy is being transformed into heat and radiant or light energy. And so if you have a higher wattage, more of that energy is being transformed quicker, so you get a brighter light bulb. So one watt which is abbreviated with a capital W, is equal to one joule per second. And we need to be super careful here, because annoyingly, a watt is abbreviated with a capital W, so the unit capital W is watt, but the variable capital W is work. So we need to distinguish between what is the variable, which is work, and the unit, which is watt. Now, we do see uh, many different other units of power, usually extensions of watt. So, oftentimes, we have watts of watts, because a joule is not a humongous amount of energy. So, we can often see, for instance, kilowatts, which is a thousand watts, megawatts, which is a million watts, and gigawatts, which is one billion watts. Those are fairly common terms, particularly when we're talking about things like electricity production. One other term that you see a lot is when we talk about power of machines, particularly of cars, is this very antiquated term of horsepower. And a horsepower, which is abbreviated HP, is actually about 746 watts. Why is that the case? Horsepower is a very antiquated term. It was defined way before we knew uh, what a joule was or what a watt, what we defined those were. So, unfortunately, it's just kind of got this very strange conversion. That is not one you need to memorize, but you at least want to write down in your notes, because we're going to see it occasionally. So, let's look at an example. So let's say we have a 950 kilogram Toyota Camry that is speeding up from 30 meters per second to 60 meters per second in 7 seconds. And we want to determine the power of this sedan during this interval in both watts and in horsepower. Well, how we start off is we need to go ahead and look at that power equation, and we need to say, okay, power is a change in energy over change in time. What are the three types of mechanical energy we're probably looking at here? It would be either a change in kinetic, plus whatever the change in gravitational potential energy is, plus whatever the change in elastic potential is. But we don't have any springs, so we don't need to worry about that. And as far as we can tell, this is all staying at the same height, so we don't have to worry about that either. The only type of energy that's changing is kinetic energy, because the Camry is speeding up. So now we can go ahead and say, all right, let's plug some numbers in. That's going to be 1 half m v squared minus v naught squared. Remember, do not put a square outside this parentheses over the change in time. So it's going to be 1 half times 950 kilograms times 60 meters per second squared minus 30 meters per second squared all over 7 seconds. And we get a power of about 183,214 watts. And to make that a nice little rounder number, let's go ahead and say that's about 183 kilowatts. If we want that in horsepower, we just divide that by 746, because there is uh, 746 watts per one horsepower. And we get a horsepower of about 245, which you know, makes sense for a Camry. Nothing too powerful. Now, one quick note, if we want to increase the power output of something, there's a couple of different ways we can do it by looking at this equation. Either one, we could have increased the amount of mechanical energy transformed. So in other words, in that previous problem, the Camry could have gone from 30 to 70 in 7 seconds. Or we can transform the mechanical energy faster. In other words, the Camry could have gone from 30 to 60 in 4 seconds or 5 seconds in a smaller period of time. So either you want to increase the change in energy, or decrease the change in time. Either one of those will make the power go up. 
Now let's take this a step further and let's look at this equation again. Power is equal to delta E over delta T, which is equal to work over delta T. And what's an equation we have for work is the force parallel times the distance. And let's go ahead and assume this is going to be a situation where the force and the motion are in the same direction. And so this really just becomes force rather than force parallel, just for the sake of this. Well, if we want to take this a step further, I could separate force from distance over change in time. This is exactly the same. All I did was basically put parentheses over part of it, but I'm still multiplying the top and dividing by the bottom, so nothing weird here. But the thing is, though, is what is distance over change in time? Well, that would be speed, or if we're going in a constant direction, we would say that is the force times the velocity. And this is actually a different form of the power equation we see occasionally. Not too often because it's only really useful in very specific circumstances, but that the power in watts is equal to the force times the velocity. But notice here, this needs to be a constant force in newtons and a constant velocity in meters per second. So in other words, um, can't be changing direction, needs to be going in a straight line, and additionally not speeding up or slowing down. So very limited circumstances, but it's very useful in those limited circumstances. So for instance, let's look at this problem. Let's say a crane has a motor with a maximum power of 80 kilowatts, 80,000 watts. If this crane is being used to lift a 2,000 kilogram steel beam, what is the maximum speed that the beam could be lifted with, assuming it's lifting it at a constant rate? So go ahead, pause the video, see if you can do this yourself. Shouldn't be too rough. Come back. Let's see how you did. Hopefully you gave it a shot. So let's go ahead and say how we would do this. We could use the equation here where I'm seeing, for instance, a power and we're looking for a speed. So that pretty much tells me, okay, I'm going to want to use this equation. Power is equal to force times velocity. I'm going to rearrange it. So that velocity is equal to power over the force. And well, what is the force being applied here? Since it's a constant speed, that means the only forces on the beam are the force that the crane is lifting with and the force of gravity and those have to be balanced. So the force that's being expressed by the crane is the force of gravity on the beam. So I would say, okay, this is 80,000 watts over the force of gravity on the beam would be 2,000 kilograms times 10 meters per second squared, or g, and we get about 4 meters per second. So in other words, the maximum constant speed that this crane could lift with would be 4 meters per second. Now, would it be smart to lift it that fast? No, for various reasons, but that is the maximum that it could do. And that's it. This was a very brief lesson on power. So what are our main takeaways? Well, one, can we calculate power in a given scenario using delta E over delta T or work over delta T in terms of different units? For instance, watts, kilowatts, horsepower. Like I said, you don't need to memorize that conversion, but I would write it down because we are going to use it occasionally. Okay, we describe ways in which to increase the power in a given scenario by either increasing the amount of energy transformed or decreasing the amount of time that transformation takes place. And can we utilize the explicit connection between power and force, that power is equal to a constant force times a constant velocity.